Hello, welcome back fabricators. We're going to jump back in and learn some more things about fabric today. Today we're, we're going to dive into how do you create a Microsoft fabric capacity all using Azure. With that, we'll jump right into our desktop. So we have our computer here. We are now logged into azure.com. We have our learn fabric trial email account logged in and already inside Azure. We're going to jump in and we're going to start with just creating a search at the very top window here. And you can use the search bar inside Azure. You'll need an Azure account and a subscription in order to use this. So this is a paid service, something you will have to be paying for. But you can type in the word fabric right in the search bar at the very top. And what you'll observe is in the services area, you'll notice that there is a Microsoft Fabric preview that just automatically shows up. So we're going to create this right now, demo this all the way through, and then we'll show you how to link this Azure-based capacity into Power BI.com. This is what a lot of people also don't recognize that you can create a lot of the Power BI artifacts also in Azure as well. And now Fabric's one of them as well. So after clicking the icon for Fabric, we jump in here to the Create Fabric page. And this is going to walk you through uh, how to bind your subscription. So the first item we must pick is which subscription we will use. The next is a name for our resource group. So if you, you can add this to an existing resource group or you can create a brand new one. For this demo, we're going to create a new resource group. And for our name, we're going to use demo dash learn fabric dash O2. So Mike, what's the best practice for creating resource groups around Power BI elements or artifacts in Azure? Yeah, I like to using the naming schema. Microsoft actually comes up with a very good naming schema for all of your resources and resource groups. Um, I recommend go Googling or looking for the Microsoft documentation, it usually follows some pattern of, you know, application, resource, and then like an O1 or O2. I actually, I'm a very big proponent of having O1 or O2 at the end of every single creation thing inside Azure, just because odds are you make a mistake sometime and you need to delete something or make a new one. Uh, it very much helps out to have a little indicator for a number at the end, because a lot of the assets you build inside Azure are required to have unique names. And by adding the numbering schema at the end, it's very easy for you to increment versions of the same type of service. This already looks a lot better than the first time I started working in Azure. Yes. A little more planned, I guess, is, you know, you <laughs> yeah. kind of learn things over time. So we will, the capacity name, this is the name of the capacity that we're going to see inside PowerBee.com. So again, we'll name the same uh, example here. Demo is what we're doing, uh, but we're also going to do the learn fabric designation for us and then add our O2. The next portion we need to call out here is where your region is. And by default, your Power BI region and your Azure Fabric region should be the same. However, it is worth to note here is you can create a fabric capacity in any region. When you link your resource group to a different region that in a fabric capacity, you can actually move your location of your data around with the fabric capacity. So um, for our example here, North Central US is where our Power BI environment lives. We will also leave this the same, but just be aware if you're going to change the region, you have the ability of moving your data to other regions as well by using this feature inside Fabric. I can order hear pe people's questions. And yes, it is a best practice where your region of Power BI is, is where you want to keep your premium or your Fabric capacities. There's some caveats to that. I mean, if you create data or you're pulling from a SQL server, or if you're pulling from a data lake, if your data lake resides in a different location or a different region than your capacity, you will incur yes. charges across regions. So again, it's very important to know where does your SQL database live if it's in Azure? Where does your warehouse live if it's in Azure? Because you want to co-locate all those objects together. Great point, Tommy. All right, this is the best part. Uh, you get to see all the money. Uh, so this is the pricing per every single SKU we have. We go all the way down to an F2 SKU. And we have capacity units. These are the capacity units that Microsoft counts or counts towards your subscription. And then you have your estimated cost. So your lowest end fabric cost is $662, I'm sorry, in USD. And it goes all the way up to $269,000 if you're going to the highest capacity. My understanding right now is if you're trying to evaluate how does this match up or marry up to the existing Power BI SKUs we have today, I believe an Azure A SKU begins at an F4. That would be an A1. Our Power BI Premium SKU begins at a... Actually, no, is that A1 there or is it A1 at the F8? I think it might be the A1 at the F8. I might have made a mistake there. The 
P1, or the Power BI Premium SKU, starts at a F64, which was also equivalent would be to, uh, this would be also an Azure A4 SKU. And I think that's where I made a mistake there. So this is your A4 SKU, and then you go three, two, and one. So I'm going to actually, I'll be wrong. <laughs> Screw that one out there. Scribble them out. I think this is your A1 SKU, the equivalent there. All right, enough with the pricing. We're going to go ahead and pick our lowest end SKU pricing. I always recommend start with your cheapest items first to see if it works for your needs. You can always upgrade later. It's very easy to upgrade. We'll select F2, and that's it. We assign our capacity administrator at the very bottom here. This will be our Learn Fabric email address, which is great. And then after that, we hit Review and Create. It'll then review our settings to make sure that they are acceptable. It will validate our selections, and then we'll hit create here as well. So what this will do is it'll create two things for us. It's first going to create the resource group that everything will belong to. It will also be in that north central region as well. And then after it creates the resource group, it will then create the fabric instance itself and put it inside that resource group additionally. It should only take it a second or two here. We actually just tested this out previously, and it didn't take us very long. You'll get a notification, deployment succeeded. We can see that up here in the upper right-hand corner. And then we can go right to the resource group. So if I click on the home icon in the breadcrumbs in Azure, it'll take me to my home window. I can then click on resource groups, the icon here in the middle of the page. And that will take me to the individual resource groups. And then I can go look for my demo fabric number two. And there we are. This is my resource group. And there's my recently created Fabric instance right here. And again, for everyone playing at home who's starting Azure for the first time, follow the steps that Mike um, did in terms of the logical naming of items. It becomes very important with the more artifacts you have in Azure. Yeah, it will, it will get more confusing as you build more and more items. All right, well, that's it. That's all we have to do for Fabric now. So now we got to go over to the Power BI space and we're going to create a workspace and then in that workspace, we're going to bind it to this new capacity that we just created. So what we'll do is we'll move over here to PowerBI.com. There we go, inside PowerBI.com. We're going to go to our workspaces. We are already signed in. We will create a brand new workspace by clicking the icon in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Once we'll have this, we'll have our descriptions. And our, our best practice here is uh, describing our uh, workspace here. So we're going to call it Demo learn fabric and we're going to call this o2 so it matches our capacity setting as well and i always recommend whenever you're building workspaces please enter a description um it's definitely really important here to also add a description around what's going on in this fabric resource group so uh, a workspace to learn and build fabric items and i'll just type that in and there we go. The next is you can use this thing called domains. We're not going to we're going to skip this for now. This will be done in a later video. Next, we'll click on the advanced options here. And you'll see immediately I am allocated as the fabric owner. Now you'll notice because I am a fabric owner and this user already has a trial associated with fabric, you notice that immediately the workspace is linked to a trial fabric. This is a trial per user license. This is not what we're going to do this time. Instead, this time we will actually dedicate our fabric capacity to what we've purchased inside Azure. And you'll notice this at the very bottom of the list, you'll see the fabric capacity appears at the very bottom of the list now. This is the option that we want to use. We're going to select the fabric capacity. And as soon as we select the fabric capacity, we get an additional option here at the bottom of the list. The word capacity now appears, and now it will go to Azure research all the fabric capacities that are available, and we will be able to bind or connect any of our Azure fabric capacities to this workspace. So this is a dedicated capacity. We're going to pay for it from Azure, but we're going to use the feature of it here inside PowerBI.com. Clicking the down arrow, you can see right away, we have our two. This was the fabric I created earlier today to make sure that we had one just in case one did, something didn't work. But the one we just created just now is Fabric 02, and that's the one we're going to use for this workspace clicking on that Fabric Workspace, and that's it. We're already done. We can hit Apply here, and what you'll notice is the, the workspace has been created. We now have a Learn Fabric up here in the upper right-hand corner. Now, interestingly enough, it doesn't really tell you that this is a Fabric-based capacity. So one thing that's interesting here, if you hover over the diamond, 
If you put your cursor directly on top of the diamond, you'll see that this is linked to fabric content. Now this is important because the fabric content uh, also talks about, this is showing you that this is a fabric capacity that we're using inside this workspace. And for those who are using premium or premium per user, this is the same icon. Uh, until they come up with a new icon, you wouldn't know uh, if this is premium or fabric. But hovering over that diamond icon allows you to say whether it's premium per user, premium, or fabric content. And you'll know this is also fabric by looking in the bottom right-hand corner of your fabric capacity. So down here at the very bottom, you notice that there is a little icon that says Power BI. This means the workflow or the, how we're building things in this workspace is now focused around Power BI. With Fabric now, you can click on that icon and you'll now observe many other options inside this menu. I can build a data factory, do data engineering. We can start looking at data science, warehousing, real-time analytics. And also there's a shortcut here to create any resources from the Fabric environment. So if I click on the Microsoft Fabric environment here, you can then see the landing page for where you would create all your assets or artifacts around Fabric. Which you can also do from the new icon in the top left of the workspace, which will also show you that you're in the workspace you created that's Fabric enabled. All right, so if we can go back over here to PowerBI.com, we'll click on Power BI, and here we are back in our workspace. Tommy, anything else we should add here to this uh, capacity or this workspace particularly? I think the only thing we want to talk through now is making sure we manage our access to the workspace. Right. So the really the biggest thing here is uh, the next step is since it's a new workspace is we just want to assign the right security groups to that workspace. So exa for example, so myself can now begin to play in this fabric workspace. So we have a security group that we've already created previously, which is called Learn Fabric. It has the users that we need to be able to play together inside this workspace. So what you can do here is you go back to the add people or groups, the green button at the top. When I click on that button, I can then type in the word learn which will then search my Azure Active Directory and find my resource group. And the, the group is, the security group, is the one that has no other items. So if it's an email address, right, you'll see here, this is my user, and this is an app service. So we're really interested in the one that has no description to it because that is my security group. So if I click on Learn Fabric, and you can make this group whatever you need to be for inside the, the resource group. Typically, we would make everyone a contributor. That's the most used... Um, permissions that we want, but in this case, our Learn Fabric group is only admins. So today we're going to add that as our admin group. Once we add this, any user will be able to get access to this workspace via the security group. And then we can close out our workspace admin settings. And which I can verify now, I can indeed see it in my own service as my user. And that's it. We've, uh, we've created a brand new workspace. We've also created an Azure Fabric work, uh, capacity, and we've been able to bind the two together. Next, we're going to start thinking about how do we get data into this workspace? What do we start doing to build value from this new Fabric environment? Thank you all very much, and we'll see you next time.